Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thanks for joining me. Well, I know you guys have been waiting for this video because I talked about it a couple of days ago, but I have an interview here with one of Wheelchair Rapunzel or Alex Dacey's ex-assistants, ex-caregivers, ex-nanny. And so she decided to come on the show and she wants to tell her story and I gave her a platform to do that. And so that's what we're doing today. So let's get to it. So Han and I share one thing in common. We are both ADHD, and that's very evident in this interview. Um, she's very fun. She's very funny. Um, she's exuberant. She's bubbly, and she's really cool. And I'm kind of sad for her that it went down this way. So she came on the show because she was fired. She feels wrongly, and Alex knew about her disability as well. And it's kind of funny that, well, not funny. It's kind of sad that Alex, who claims ableism all left, right, and no matter what you say about her, it's ableism, is the same as firing someone for not being able to to control some things about her life, but you're gonna see in this video that Alex said it was about something else. And so I just wanted to give you that because it's a little bit unclear, but after this video, we are going to be doing a Q&A with Hannah, if she's brave enough, um, on my channel on a live stream, and she's gonna answer all your questions or questions that I am gonna sift through, um, so she can answer those questions. And uh, you're gonna be able to get a little bit more because I'm sure I didn't ask all the questions because I don't know everything about her, but we pretty much covered everything from when she started to when she ended and everything in between. And, and oh my God, when I tell you this, buckle up because she spills the tea. So let's get to it. Today I have a very special guest, Hannah. And Hannah is awesome. She has got some great stories to tell us today. She's got some tea to spill and she's got some justice to get. I think that's pretty important today. Hannah, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. It, it's an honor. People are wondering who you are, but let's set some ground rules right off the top. We're not going to be disclosing your last name, where you live, or anything like that. All you are known to us is Hannah, and you are somebody that is connected with Alex Dacey, also known as Wheelchair Rapunzel, and Noah, and that whole area. You've got a little bit of insight, actually a lot more than anybody else will. And I also want to lay this out right off the top, that you have not signed a non-disclosure agreement with Alex Dacey, right? That is correct. That's good. Good for you. That's that's a big win. Yeah. So um, I've got some questions for Hannah and Hannah, she might have some notes and stuff. That's fine. I, I, if you've got your notes, I appreciate you having your notes because this is a really important topic because uh, not only are we covering a child exploiter, but your story has got, it's got some pretty detailed stuff that we need to get into as well with the way that she treats her employees, which was you and uh, and some other things that we really want to talk about, like dog abuse and child abuse and things like that, that are all going to conglomerate into these questions. And so to kick it right off, just to get started, um, who are you and how are you connected with Alex? So I'm Alex's Daisy's former caregiver or a personal assistant. She says both. I worked for her for about almost a month. And how did she find you to become her caregiver? So she had an ad up on Craigslist for a personal assistant for a caregiver. Um, I thought it'd be a great uh, match for me. So I applied, she responded back, emailed me, and then we did a test trial. On February 17th, we did a three hour test trial. And then that's how I got the job. So there's no resume required. All it said in the ad was you have to be a hard worker. Mm -hmm. So it was just basically an email and saying, okay, sounds like you're going to be a good fit. Let's do a three day test trial where she pays you, obviously, hopefully. No, not a three day test trial, a three hour test trial. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like an interview, for, but you have to go in there and like sit down with their test trial. And what was, what happened during that three hours? I worked those three hours. And so that was the process to get hired. She obviously liked you after three hours and said, okay, let's do this thing. Yes. And then what happened after that? I started working for her. I worked from her for her from February 17th to March 11th. So, so you get hired, everything looks good. What does your daily routine consist of at the beginning of the job? So my daily routine is taking care of Alex fully to my capability and same with Ari the baby. So as a caregiver, I would uh, change Ari's sheets. I uh, would uh, feed her, shower her, dress her. Uh, we'd go out to places, but mainly take care of Ari the baby. So your main job was the Ari not, and not Alex at all? It's a bit of both, honestly. Okay. So my daily routine, I would go there. Um, I would change a vag towel and put it on her chair, put the old one in the washer. As soon as we get up, she has like 
four drinks. Uh, we put them all in cups. Well, I put them all in cups. She calls them SMA cups. And so one will have a smoothie, one will have water, one will have a high noon in there. And then the other one could be Gatorade. She likes so to- So a high noon is alcohol? Yes, for breakfast. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that Alex drinks throughout the day, including right in the morning. It's gotta be five o'clock somewhere. Well, okay. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll save that. And so what are some other things you do? Would you cook for her? Clean? Would you clean? Would you take care of Ari? Would you um, make sure? Or, like, were you basically Ari's main carry turkey during the day or was Noah a part of that too? Okay. So I sweeped, I mopped, I did all the cleaning, all the laundry. It's a lot. When you have a baby, it's a ton of laundry. You constantly mm -hmm. have loads throughout the day, three, four loads. Noah. So when I first started, Gammy was there for two weeks. So in the beginning, I didn't meet Noah for about two, well, a week or two, actually. Um, what happened was when I first started, Gammy was living on her couch for two weeks. She flew in from Chicago because mm -hmm. as soon as they moved into that apartment, Noah was Baker acted. He was high off drugs. He slammed a hole into her wall, punched a hole in her wall. Daryl, his father, came and patched it up. And then he got sent off, Baker acted. He went. Now, this all happened before you started? Yes, because okay. this, Alex told me over the phone. Okay. And she told you this over the phone just to say, so maybe like, hey, fair warning, it's a little bit chaotic here. Is that why she told you this stuff? Well, she just says, that's why I need a caregiver. Gammy can't do much because she has a bad back. So that's why I need a caregiver now. I just. I see. Okay. So he was Baker acted. He left the place. Gammy is there, but Gammy can do anything. So she's got to hire you. And now is this like a long-term full-time position? So when I started out, I was doing nine to one. Once it hit about March 1st, I was doing nine to three. Okay. And so who takes care of Ari if Gammy can't do it and you're not there and we know that Alex can't because she's literally physically not able to do it. Who takes care of Ari then if you're not there? So Ari gets sent, uh, Ari gets sent to um, Tracy and Daryl's house. Noah's parents. Okay. Now does Ari live there most of the time or does she, does he, she live at the place with Alex? Like what, is she just splitting her time between all those places? She lives with Alex the majority of the time. Okay. Cause I know I've been seeing on the Reddit forums, people are like talking about, does she stay with Noah's parents or does she stay with Alex? But you're saying here in your experience, she stayed with Alex most of the time. So yeah. my question remains, if she's not going to Noah's parents, like say they can't take her, how is she being taken care of? So whenever that happens, she's just left alone with the baby for a couple hours. And is that safe in your opinion? No. Yeah. Because she physically cannot do anything. If there's a problem, she, she can't. That's that, and that, and that, and again, it's nothing to do with her disability, but her disability actually stops her from actually being able to do anything. Like she could call nine one one if anything ever happens. So there's that. But if there's anything that baby needs, Alex can't provide it. No. Okay. Thanks for your honesty. Appreciate that. So now, what was your first impression of the whole situation as you got into this position? Like you first got there, was everything like, oh, this is cool, or like this is really weird? How did it affect you? So when I first met Alex, the first day I started as a test trial, I thought she was the most amazing woman. I thought she was beautiful, just amazing, <laughs> incredible. I saw a beautiful home. I saw a beautiful woman, and she did everything to the best of her ability. She did everything. So I just mm -hmm. thought she was very powerful and strong. Okay. And then what shifted? How did, when did that, when did like the scales fall off your eyes and when did you start seeing the real Alex? Day three on February 20th, 2024. I worked nine to one for her. Then I went to my second job, two to six. She called me and said Gammy was drunk. Also texted me that Gammy was drunk, her mother. And Alex was drunk at the Rivertail restaurant. And with that, I went there. I rushed at 6.30. Let I me stop you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me stop you for a second. She's drunk at a restaurant. Gammy's drunk at the apartment. Where's Ari? Uh, in the apartment with Gammy. Okay. That's, that's super sketchy and sus. That's not as, that's not safe. Why do you think I rushed to get there? Right. Okay. Yes. Thank God you did. So what happened after that? So as soon as I get there, she's eating mac and cheese, drinking at the restaurant. She says she has to use the bathroom. As soon as uh, we do that, uh, I try to get her to the bathroom. Uh, she pees all over me. All right. Sorry. Let me just get this story straight. So she calls you to come take care of her, not Ari. You get to the restaurant and she pees on you. Yes. But she called you to come to a restaurant because she had to use the bathroom? Yes, because Gammy 
or was upstairs drunk and she wouldn't help her. They were having a fight. So as soon as I get there, I get her to the bathroom and then she pees all over me. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's sorry. That's crazy. So tell me a little bit more about Gammy. Is she, in your opinion, is she, is she an alcoholic? Is that she just, she's just like a heavy drinker? Like what, what was your opinion of Gammy? What, how did she treat you? Uh, Gammy verbally abused me um, once I got in the picture because she saw me as a threat. She constantly condescended me. A threat how, though? Like, what was she feeling threatened about? After she uses the bathroom uh, and pees on me, the, um, we go to the elevator. Whenever that happens uh, to her apartment, she says, then she says, Alex says, I'm worse than the devil. And then that scared the daylights out of me. We go upstairs as soon as I get there, Gammy gets my face and says, why are you here? I said, I'm okay. here with Alex. So that's a scary part. That's a scary thing. So she's obviously drunk. And this is the third day. Up to this point, had you seen her drunk? She She's drunk in the morning. Okay. So she's a day drinker and she's, so she drinks all day long. What you're, it sounds like what you're telling me is that she literally drinks from morning to, to night. Yes. So she's always, okay. Alex gets it from her mom, you know? That's why Alex drinks. Her mom needs serious help. I told Gammy, uh, you need help, and she needs to go to rehab. You know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Right, and so you're just trying to help. You're a caregiver. This is literally what you do. Okay, yeah, so she called me uh, to do take her. She's the bathroom, not to take care of Ari while Gammy's drunk. That was huge for me. But yeah. the real red flag was in the elevator when she was drunk and said she is worse than the devil. That that's a, and that's a scary red flag for you for sure. Yeah, because I am a Christian. Okay. So, um, so how is Alex as a person then? Alex, once you really get to know the truth of her, sorry, this is hard for me to say because she's scary. Um, Alex is malicious. She's vindictive and she is cruel. Do you have any examples of, uh, does she treat you badly? Is that how this word? Like what, can you give me some examples of like, what makes you say that? Cairo is her six year old chihuahua. Chihuahuas are close to my heart because that was my childhood dog I had for 13 years before he passed away of old age. They are tiny but mighty. She is a beautiful chihuahua. He is so neglected. I got in her face about it and told it straight to Noah and Alex's face. And he begs just for attention. She only takes that dog out twice a day. And so whenever she t it goes out, it uses the bathroom multiple times because he holds it all day. When I had a chihuahua, we were taking him out four or five times a day. And you're a dog person. I'm a dog person. There's a lot of dog people here. And in your opinion, she, she absolutely neglects this animal. Yes. And that kills me because I have two of the most beautiful dogs ever now. And they're my entire life. They're my best friends. So in my heart, whenever she would yell at me for trying to help Cairo and take him out, she said to, well, she would text it to me. I have the receipts. She would defer to my request about taking Cairo out because I would press her and ask her over and over, can I take him out? No. She would say no. And you're like, this dog needs to get out. And she would tell you no. Well, when I would press her, she would give in. But then after a few days, she said, please defer from my request and don't question them. So she would put in a text message, kind of passively aggressively say, look, stop questioning me about that. When I say no, no means no. Yes. But okay. It's Alex is, it's all controlled behavior. She is the most probably controlling person I've ever met. Okay. Um, and now let's get on to Noah a little bit. What was your first impression of Noah? Noah is unpredictable. His personality, he can flip a switch one moment and the next moment you don't know what he's going to do. He's the real wild card between the two. Do you ever feel threatened around him? Yes. Especially with his police record. Yeah. And now explain to me a little bit of like, what's his day to day? Like, does he actually help you? Were you there? I mean, you're hired to do this. Like, let, let's be real. You're hired to be the caretaker to do the things. And that's great. You understood your job, but did he just lay around on the couch a lot? Like these, does he, there's a question. Does he vape and smoke inside of the house? Yes, he does vape in front of Ari and Alex hates it. But Alex lets him do it. She yells at him when he does it, but he continues to do it. Is at one point you told me during our conversations that she he blow vape smoke into her face? So Noah vapes, but it's always he's always sitting on the couch vaping. Ari's usually in a high chair, and so she can obviously breathe that in because it's across from him. And he would blow like he blows it into her face. 
Well, it lingers into her face. Yeah, which I mean, we know that that's super dangerous. Is does Gammy smoke as well? She does not vape. She smokes cigarettes, which is more dangerous, I think. Does she smoke in the house? Well, the times I saw her smoking were in the parking garage, but I found cigarette buds next to the washing machine. So that indicates to me that she's smoking in the house because why would there be cigarette butts in the in the laundry room? That's but that's important because this kid is not only we know that she's being neglected, we know that she's being put in an unsafe position, especially with Gammy while she's downstairs getting drunk, calling you because if you couldn't have gone, like what would have happened, right? We know that this kid is having vape smoke and smoke cigarette smoke around her. Now vape more than cigarettes because Gammy's not always there, but no vapes in the house. We know he does because he's taking videos where he's holding his vape pen. Yes, but what was more concerning once red flags came on every couple of days, um, there were new marks on Ari's face and I would ask her about it. She said she fell. One day she had this scratch on her face right here, a pink scratch. And then other days came back, uh, went by and it was like red all down here. And then there were just more marks every couple of days. So that was alarming to me. I'm like, is the baby falling on her face? Mm -hmm. I'm like, and what, and she just said fell, didn't say how, didn't explain the accident further? No. And you didn't, like, I mean, obviously you don't want to push it. This is your boss. And you're like, okay, well, I'm just checking. And it, it, the rash, is it skin conditions? you have eczema, stuff, stuff, anything like that? Uh, no, She never told me if she does or not, so I do not know. And I think she would tell you that considering you are a caregiver of REA. If she's got eczema, there's these creams because, you know, I know how that works. So you got there's specific creams you got to use and medical things. OK, so let's continue on Noah. So tell me tell me a little bit more about how that progresses and how it looks day to day for her. And obviously they're not together. They say they're not. But are they together? When Noah came back, he came back the day I had to leave for my second job. He came back uh, about within like a week and a half because it was that week, one week to two week mark. He came back, called, we were at a restaurant. Um, and what happened was I had to leave for my second job. So from what Alex told me, he went upstairs with the baby back up to the apartment. Once Gammy was there, because Gammy was trying to get Alex to get a restraining order against him and get custody of Ari. So whenever... Okay. I know it's crazy. Whenever they go back to the party while he's living there. No, he wasn't living there because he was Baker acted. He was living Baker acted. There. Okay, so during the Baker acted area, uh, this whole debacle, Gammy's trying to be like, okay, now he's gone. Let's just, let's figure out a way to get this legally separated. Yes. Yeah, so she, okay. he was pressing Alex during that time, and Alex was talking to Noah when she wasn't around. Ah, uh, so she was listening. She wasn't listening to Gammy, but Gammy was thinking she was. But yeah. she was secretly talking to Noah. Yeah, so whenever Noah comes into the apartment, Gammy hit, punches him in the face. She punched him in the face? Yes, and then the police were called that day. But that's what Alex told me. I was not there to witness it because I was at my second job. Gammy sounds real nice. Gam, gam. She is a character. <laughs> yes, she is in this story for sure. What were some more red flags and issues that you had found and you had as your time progressed. Noah leaves whenever they get in a fight or whenever he is high off drugs. He is in and out of that apartment and uh, Alex is alone with the baby. But once I really met Noah's parents, things started to really add up. Okay. So explain his parents to me. Okay. So Tracy is the most condescending woman I've ever met. She is a mother of five children. She has five mm -hmm. children. This many, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> five children. And with Noah, he is such a wild card. You never know what – you just never know what his next move is. So, or, you know, or, or it sounds like he has like – probably is very, very high, very uh, very high ups and downs. Sounds like he's manic almost to a degree, manic. personality disorder. Okay. He does have a personality disorder. Yes, he does. Um, she is very old school, and she's very hard on all five of those children. Now, Daryl – is the father of him. When I spend my time with Daryl, he is a lot more relaxing and accepting of the two. Okay. He, and he's the guy that came over and fixed the hole in the wall that Noah punched in the wall. Yes. He was very kind to do that. Okay. Let me just recap. Let me just re-ask you something. You talk about Noah leaving the house to go do drugs. Now, are you saying that's be you, you, you think this happened because when he got back, he was weird or he was weird when he left? What was, how did you know that that was what was going on? Because I asked him one day, I said, how do you guys get through the days when I'm not here? A lot of vaping and a lot of drugs. But didn't tell you what kind of drugs? No. 
And let's let's be real. When Alex leaves, sorry, when Alex leaves her with Noah, there is there is a high likelihood, or even a small likelihood, that he could be high. Yes. And if he leaves with her, there's a high likelihood that she can't actually parent this child because she can't physically do it anyway. She can't pick the child up. She can't feed the child. She can't change a diaper. She can't do anything. She literally cannot because can you explain to those people who don't know her capabilities? Well, her capabilities, I think she does the best she can, but with her capabilities, she can only really use one hand. Uh, the other one just, it's not working. It doesn't, um, it, it's got paralysis, right? Um, it's like, I don't know the exact word for it, but it's weak in the hand where she can't use it. Like okay. the, the nerves in the hand. So she can only use one hand for the most part. Did so she that, ever get you to make TikToks and cook food for her and say that she's the one cooking the food? <laughs> yes. I saw, I just recently watched her TikToks because I'm like, let's just watch these. <laughs> and it's hilarious because she's like, oh, I, one of my favorite things is cooking. And I'm looking through the comments and everybody's like, but you don't cook. And she's like, just because I don't do anything doesn't mean I don't cook. Well, that's actually exactly what that means. Well, she's, so. cute. she's cute about that. We, uh, well, I make the food and then on her TikTok, she, uh, the little, uh, what's it called? Little paddle or what's it called? Bachelor. Bachelor. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. She okay. just uses a spatula for her TikToks and just rolls the food around. And, but I would make it. And then she, for her TikTok, she would just roll it around with her hand. Right. So she wants to say, but she, but she's just, is she being jokingly saying like, I'm doing this or she's being serious. Like she made it. From what I've seen, it's a little bit of both. She's like, okay. Oh, Give her halt me, but then I'm like, oh, I came with, up with this and this. So I think it's both. Okay. As your time progresses at this job, um, the, you're noticing the dog is 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 being neglected. You know the child is being neglected. You know all this stuff is happening, and then she gets she pumps you up to ninety three full time, and then like, mm -hmm. what else are you seeing? What else is bothering you? So Alex is drunk almost every day off these high noons, uh, especially when I pour for her in the SMA cups. And then by afternoon, I'm like worried. I'm like, she's drinking, but she's always taking this medicine. It's called twerk juice. Well, that's what she calls it. She takes it. We in don't know what's in it though. I don't know what's in it. I know it's in the fridge. I put it in an orange syringe and I would give it to her. I guarantee you, like if you looked at her meds, probably most of them would say don't take with alcohol. Well, that's the thing. That's what I was worried about. When she's drinking before and after she's taking that meds, I was very concerned. How many high noons is she taking in a day while you're working there from nine to three? Well, here's the thing. I'm pouring so many SMA cups. There's probably at least three or four while I'm on shift. And then at night, who knows? Because I didn't work night shift. So she's a functioning alcoholic. She's like, she, do, can you tell if you watch her TikToks when she's severely drunk or when she's not? Can you tell? It's when she's emotional crying and her face okay. turns like you, she, you can't, she can't keep a straight face. Yeah. So like that video she uh, posted rebuttaling you, like you could tell she was drunk because just the way her face turned crying, sobbing. And it, it's ridiculous. Like it took you a while to see through her. It did take you a little while. Cause I mean, obviously she's also your boss. She's paying you. You've got to keep a job because you know, we need jobs. We need jobs to survive. And this is one that's, it's not the worst thing you've ever done, but when did everything start changing for you? When did you start being like, okay, I got to figure this out. What keeps happening? Like, are you like, what the heck is going on here? Are you starting to get worried? Are you aware of her fame? Well, here's the thing. I knew she was a social media influencer and I didn't know much about her. I just saw when I first saw her ad, I looked her up on Instagram. She was so beautiful with pictures of Ari and the Chihuahua and I thought she was stunning, doing everything she can while being disabled. I was just, I was honoring her. I just thought she was amazing. And okay. so that's why I did the test trial and tried it out. But what really scared me was the birthday party on March 9th, 2024. Um, this is when everything changed, right? This is when things really went down. Walk yeah. me through the entire day. Start at the beginning. So I'm going to pick up the cake. She had the most beautiful cake ever. Probably one of the most beautiful cakes I ever have ever seen. And so everybody's upstairs getting ready for this party. The balloons, uh, the food, everything's getting ordered from Publix. So whenever I get there, I'm putting the cake in the fridge. People start coming up. There's confetti everywhere. So there's gold confetti on the floor, which mm -hmm. is fine. It's a party. I understand. 
I'm putting the cake in the fridge. Alex is so busy entertaining. I'm bringing people up, up the elevator. because We're like on the top floor. We are on the roof of the building. And what happens is when I'm bringing people up, putting the cake in the fridge, she's so busy drinking and entertaining her guests, she wasn't paying attention to Ari. Ari choked on gold confetti and threw up all over her birthday dress. Oh, my gosh. And so... And and let's not forget that she, she probably had you doing this as part of your day. So today's job is you're you're going to escort people up the elevator. You're getting the cake. You're doing all these things. And she wanted you to take care of Ari? Or did she blame you for that? She did not blame uh, me for that because I was busy doing everything else. Uh, taking care of the guests, getting the food ready, the cake, taking pictures. I took about a billion pictures for and her. And so meanwhile, mom. this kid is literally eating plastic golden confetti. Nobody's watching this child. And it's her <laughs> birthday. Well, here's the thing. She put the baby with the other babies at the birthday party crawling around the floor. That was the thing. So one, her, let's see, Noah's sister was there and her sister's best friend's mom was there. And she claims that she has three children of her own. She's the one who picked up Ari and told Alex she's choking. And then the spit up went everywhere. And as soon as she spits up, we tear the sink. We get the dress off. I go downstairs and dry the dress and the wash machine. And so her so, priority was getting the dress back on so the photos look good. Yes. Damn. That's cold. That's so cold. This kid could have died from choking on confetti, by the way. That's really, really dangerous. Like, I yeah. bet you if you even looked at the package of confetti, it probably said to keep away from kids under three. Yeah, so she was in decent half of her birthday party while, uh, crawling around in a diaper because the dress had to be taken off. That's crazy. So that was a – so what – anything else on that day that stands out for you? Just Noah's mom, Tracy. She is – She's interesting. She just, whenever she, you, when somebody thinks they're better than anyone, that's what scares me because in my eyes, we're all equal. Like God created us. We are all equal. Like nobody is better than anyone. In my opinion, we're all equal. And she gives off vibes like she's way better than everybody. And she like puts that out there. Well, she condescends everyone, especially her five children. I think that's part of the reason why Noah is so messed up because she has been a very hard mother on him. Okay. But, I think if I had to pick between the parents, I'd pick Daryl. He's more understanding. Let's go back to Cairo. I am very concerned. I just, I am. Be, I just hate it for Cairo because he's not getting any attention. He was the love of their life. When he was living in Weston, she told me he had a yard, a pool, everything. He was walking around, had everything. But now when they're in an apartment, he's getting no attention paid to him. Like, nothing. And he's constantly pawing me, scratching my arm for me to pet him and just the yelling that she would get I me. Mean, she's like, he's fine. And then whenever I got in her face to Noah and Alex and said, this dog is being neglected. And we need to pay more attention to him. Well, you guys need to pay more attention to him. Noah said, I do think we are not taking good enough care of Cairo. Noah did say He that. admitted it. He admitted it. Yes. Alex just shook her head. So, and I think in our story, you tell me, you said that you said, well, let me just take him home then. You offered to take him home. Yes, I did. Because I love chihuahuas. And she said no. Uh, yeah, she said no. But um, with night shifts, I have no idea who watches Ari or the dog or anything because I didn't work night shifts. So I have no idea who's really taking care of them because at night, like, she tries to go out. Like, she's always going out doing stuff. So... I don't know, but here's the thing. I heard she went out and partied and went to the club during while her kid was in ICU. Yeah, but I wasn't working that time, so I don't know. But I do yeah. know. So let's get on to, um, tell me about the knife story. Yeah, okay. Gammy's a ticking time bomb. Uh, okay. Oh, for weeks, there was this bed sheet on the floor next to the couch. And under the bed sheet, for weeks it wasn't there. It was there because we were just moving the stuff. Well, she moved the stuff in. And with that... So underneath this bed, she was mixed tile. So she had part of her frames up above her TV of her and her family stuff. So with that, underneath the sheet was mixed tiles. And once we cleaned it and put everything on the wall, there was a knife in the middle. And on the floor, I said, Alex, what is this? You have a baby. What is this? She says, I have no idea how that got there. But what scared me, it was there for weeks underneath the sheet. With so that was a big, big danger. And again, we're just, again, the reason we're, we're saying that we're, I'm, I'm asking these types of questions is because this is important. DCF is being called for reasons. And this is one of the reasons there's a child that crawls 
there's a giant knife on the floor and it's been there for a little while. Who knows what could happen? This kid choked on confetti. Who she knows is, what could have happened? She is this close to walking. Let's talk about the marks and bruises. We did touch on it a bit, but like, this is something that's been going on a lot. So the marks and bruises, I just, here's the thing. I, like I said, I was only, I worked nine to one. Then I went into full time to nine to three. Just the new marks on her really scared me. But when I pressed her, she would just, she's like, she fell. Like I said before, she just fell. So I, I tried pressing more and she's like, let's, she would jump to the next subject. And that yeah. really, that really, you know, it started troubling you, right? You started being like, okay, well, there's something obviously else going on here. Yeah. Let's talk about more about the drinking habits. Now, like, did she get you to go buy her the alcohol or how did she get it? If she could like, did she go down there? Does she often down the restaurant just ordering drinks too? Is that how she got the booze? Yeah, of course. When she goes out, she orders drinks. But whenever we are at home at the apartment, she orders it off Instacart. And so whenever the delivery comes, I just show her, show them the, her license that she gives me and I accept it and I put it in the cabinet. Okay, so she orders a lot on it. So obviously that's probably part of her life anyway. When you couldn't do night shifts and who watched the kid, like how often was she partying? For real? I have no idea because I didn't work night shifts. I can't confirm that. Okay. I, I but she would literally make videos, so we kind of know, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, she admits on her video that I saw today, she said something about why do you wear pants very often. She's like, because I have to schedule getting pants put on. Okay, so I'll be honest. When you put the pants on, it's very hard. Whenever I put the pants on, it's very hard. It would take me time. But Alex does not wear a bra or underwear. And the majority of the time when we would go out, I said, "Hun, babe, can I please put some pants on you? We would go out. She would wear a long T-shirt. And she would just lean over where she's not wearing underwear or pants. And we would go out and she would just lean over. And I was like, okay, I can't force her to do something. You know, I'm only one right, person. Right, but she admits that. She's like, well, it takes, it, it, I have to schedule. But you're saying that you would say, can I please put some pants on you? And she would not say no. Well, some days I did put pants on her. But other day, times we'd go out, she just wouldn't. But it's one thing not wearing a bra to hold yourself up and just cut. Because out of respect you need to as a woman. And But it's another thing. Like, I understand if you just want to, like, go out and just wear, like, something short, like, shirt, shorts. Like, you can wear whatever. As long as you're wearing clothes. <laughs> what scared me, like, I'm dead serious. Like, what scared the daylights out of me is, like, she has her genitals. She has everything. And she has no pants on, uh, no underwear. And she's just leaning over. So whenever we go to order, she's, like, leaning back. I'm like, Alex, Alex, lean forward. So, so how many people in public have seen this woman's private areas? Excuse me. Your balls are showing. Bumblebee tuna. I don't know. People came. But up no one's gonna say anything because she's in a wheelchair. Well, constantly people came up to us and uh, were fans, want pictures, the sign, everything. I was like, I'm like, I'm just eating because she is nice enough. Whenever you go out, she does pay for your meal, so I'm just eating, watching the baby. So. And she's over there. Taking fan pictures, literally bare assed. Yes. So with the cheese hands, back to the cheese hands. Um, it is just it's not both hands, it's just one. So whenever so the one that I was telling you has like no mobility in is the one that stinks and reeks of cheese. But that badge towel gets changed like four or five times a day. Okay. But, yeah. But um it has no feeling and so yeah, I feel like so she. But she has. She obviously can feel her bladder and everything because she knows when she has to go to the bathroom. She doesn't have to wear diapers or anything like that. So clearly, she does have control over her stuff. Yeah, but um, once we come to uh, demanding, um, like she is very demanding and controlling. It's like a mind game to her. So Noah. Like I said before, you never know what his next move is because of his personality disorder. One moment he's nice, one moment he's quiet, the next moment he is screaming, fighting at her, and then whole wall punching. Like I can't believe I even tried out this job. You know? Did they ever fight in front of you? Yeah, and then Alex would lie, uh, like lie to him, and then like turn her face laughing, ha ha ha. And that's when I first started to see it. They get but him on. Yeah. So another huge thing for me is not just physical abuse, is emotional abuse. That is huge. Everyone out there should never be mistreated. 
Everybody. Yeah. She's going to get everybody signed NDAs from this point forward, but you didn't sign it and she didn't send it to you. She was lazy about the whole thing. And that just allowed you to kind of tell your truth and your story here. She fired you. Yep. Tell me about the con. Tell me about this contract. She says you broke the, the contract and that's why she was firing you. Um, you, you believe that she fired you for other reasons that like your ADHD was getting in the way and she just didn't want to handle it anymore. But tell me what, what happened with the contract thing. So the contract thing, I never signed anything. So whenever she texted me that I breached confidentiality. Yes. Thank you. Um, that I breached that. I'm like, how do I breach anything when I didn't sign anything, honey? You didn't sign a contract. Nope. So then you did not breach a contract. So if she said that you were fired, but for breach of contract, there was no contract because you didn't sign it. Again, you got fired for the wrong reasons. And even if she did say it was the right reason or she said, oh, you did this, you didn't sign that contract. She just fired you. So that kind of sucks. Actually, I'm really happy she did because I would have ended up quitting before long. Uh, the thing is, I was trying to get for the benefit of the doubt because I just thought she was going through a tough time with the move, mm -hmm. no being Baker acted, the condescending parents, Gammy leaving, going back to Chicago. I felt sorry for her. I stayed for Ari and for Cairo because they can't speak for themselves. And that's why I stayed. I was worried and I stayed because I need to make sure they were safe. Whenever Ari cries, she is the most beautiful baby. Like you guys, all babies are beautiful, but she is so beautiful, so happy. She is the most beautiful chihuahua, like most beautiful baby. Just smiling, giggling, crawling around like I've worked, she's an I've, easy baby she's an easy baby oh she's perfect that's the thing i she's amazing but the thing was whenever she'd go down for a nap this is going back to the emotional abuse just as bad as physical abuse in my eyes um it's just hard to say because whenever she'd go down for her nap and she'd be crying she says Oh, that's pathetic. And then whenever she'd cry, whenever uh, she would cry when she got up from her nap to tell us that she's waking up, she would cry. She's like, oh, sweetie, tootie bear. That's so pathetic. My little patushka is what she calls her. I don't even know what that is. And I'm 24 years old. Yeah. This baby came into this world because of her partying and everything else. And she she slept with many, many. She, I think she's admitted to sleeping with many, many, many men. Yeah, you'd be surprised at what I know. She told me, oh, God, her whole life. So she, oh, she was an oversharer. She told you everything. Yes, but, you know, it's my job to listen to her. That's true. A caregiver's job to listen. And, okay, so mm -hmm. what did she tell you that or, like, really gave you, like, oh, my gosh? What was the one of the – what is the biggest, like, oh, my gosh story she ever told you? So Alex is a partier. Alex parties. She goes from guy to guy to guy to guy. I was like, you do you, girlfriend. And, but that was before she was a parent. So I was like – Go have fun. You're in your late 20s. You just hit 30. Go have fun. You know, you only live once. And then she would meet, bring guys home and sleep with them every night. The first night, I was like, oh my gosh. And then she met Noah off oh, Bumble. <laughs> oh my gosh. I guess that's just as bad as Hinge um, or Tinder. I, I don't know any of them. I think they're all bad. I, I don't know. I guess girls got to hook up somewhere, you know? I, I'm so glad I've been married for 16 years when I was dating. I, I from church. We didn't have this stuff. We had Christian mingle when I was <laughs> when you're listening to all these crazy stories. You're just like, I mean, it's your job to listen, but you're hearing things that are just like, oh, my gosh. Did you ever question? Like, why are you sleeping with having 21 night stands? Like, I don't understand. Like, how well, she admitted to sleeping with about over 20 guys before she met Noah. Then, uh, then that she would bring home. And then when she met Noah, Noah is relationship material. She did not want to date Noah. So she did not sleep with him the first night. And so that's why he stuck around. She did not want to sleep with him. So he, she's like, Noah told me directly when we were all in the bathroom while I was showering her. She's like, she didn't, she will sleep with other guys the first night, but she didn't sleep with me the first night. So it took him a little bit of time. And so once that happened, they became more best friends. She did not want to date him at all because she does not want a long-term relationship. She was playing the field. She wanted to go from guy to guy to guy. And Noah wanted a relationship. So that's but they broke up. So they broke up. He's Baker acted. He gets out of the house because he's freaking out. He's getting high. He's doing all these things. He's supposed to be taking care of this kid, but he's Baker acted, which is why her mom comes down. Okay. Then he gets back. Are they still, but they're still hooking up. Yes, they are still hooking up and they are back together. For somebody who says that they're not together, they are together, honey. They are so together. Okay, so why did she lie about that? 
I think for more views and for to sell her merch. Wow, that's so weird. Because her clapback for me was like, "Oh, I'm so sad." Also, buy my t-shirts, <laughs> which are like completely <laughs> so and they're funny. stolen designs too. It's hilarious. Because, seriously, if you're gonna look yourself up on the internet. That's fine, but that's how you start something off. You're lying. Of course, somebody reached out to her and she watched your video. I do not believe that she did not watch your full video. Yeah, she had. Yeah. Okay, good. So that so let's do some closing thoughts here. What what do, what do you want people to know, and why did you come on the show? So, it like I said, it took me about a month to come forward. This is not an easy thing to do because trust me, I talked to Josh before this started. I went back and forth about mm -hmm. wanting to do this because I like my life private. Everything uh, very private. My friends, my family, you know, like I've never done anything like this. I've yeah, and I want to I want to reiterate this too that. We're not giving your last name. We're not giving any information about you. You don't want that information out there. So if that information gets out there about who you are, your last name, where you live, anything like that, you got to know that Alex is doxing Hannah here. So I need you guys to realize that if anything comes out about her, that's called doxing. And that's what, that's, what's going to have. So we want to make sure that you just, I, I, I'm glad that you were brave enough to come to the show. And I appreciate when people like you come on because they, you expose who they really are. And that's really important for the topic that I talk, especially with child exploitation. Okay. Um, cause what I really talk about here is child exploitation, which is what is happening with Ari, but what you're, what's going on with you is that you could be in a position right now that she could mobilize her fans because she did that for me. But what I want to encourage you in is that just like laugh it off, save the screenshots and let and if she does something stupid you will have legal recourse yes of course but like I, yeah you're exactly right but guys like i said you'd be so bold to do something like this you know stand up for what you believe in but remember guys one honest voice is larger than a crowd i gotta i gotta say it too like you're being being, being the brave part is really important too because without your types of stories people like you saying what you need to say we don't get to hear it all and that's really important and that's gonna i, I think in the end that's gonna be a, a net positive for ari if she's if she needs to be in a position where she's in a better place and yeah. it just sounds like she's not and that really sucks well here's the thing like my last thoughts were like, don't be controlled because been there, done that with Alex. But you guys need to come forward, like each and every one of you on here, because everyone deserves to be heard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And she and she obviously wanted to sign suit with an NDA and you didn't sign it. So thank God for that. Yeah. All right, Hannah. So we are going to bring you back for an Ask Me Anything. I'll keep people updated. We'll be in touch with how we're going to do that. Um, the people in the Reddit threads and everybody else who wants to hear Hannah's story and has questions that I might have missed because I missed a lot probably. And there's probably people out there, oh, I wish you would ask this. <laughs> we will do that. We will bring her on for a live. It's going to be great. You guys, she's going to come out and we're going to see. Oh, can we see your dogs real quick? I want to see the dogs. This is my child. This Hi, is Bella. My she is four years old. She is a COVID dog. We got her during COVID. She's very reserved, very sweet. This is my heart and soul, my protector. Milo is my six-year-old Icelandic sheepdog. Oh, he's beautiful. He's beautiful. I got him when I was 18 years old. Hey, Milo. How you doing, buddy? Milo's my baby. Us is getting all jealous. He's like, who are you talking to over there? <laughs> if you want to send some questions beforehand, that's cool too. I'll, I'll set up something on my Instagram and we'll do that. But Hannah, I just want to say, I really, really appreciate you coming on the show, saying your truth, and I really appreciate everything you do. So everything you're saying here is to the best of your knowledge is honest and your is your story. Yes, sir. I think everyone awesome. deserves to be heard. Absolutely. I, I agree with you, especially if people are treating people like crap and out there trying to pretend like they're good people when they're really not. So again, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, I will let you guys know when the Q and a is you're awesome. So there you have it, everybody. That's Hannah's interview. Um, thank you so much again, Hannah, for coming on the show. I really appreciate you. And um, we'll give you another date this week that we're going to do a Q&A. &A. Um, on my Instagram, I'll actually put it up there and I'll put a thing and ask, ask anything and we'll go through those questions. Or I'll put one also on my community page on YouTube and we will do that. Um, I think there's a lot that I missed, obviously, a lot that I don't know. And some people are very curious and have a lot of questions. And so we're going to answer those questions together on a live stream, have some fun. And just so you guys are aware, right after I got done this interview, Noah started chirping at me on Instagram and just going crazy. Like that dude is nuts. And even since this video, I've even seen more videos. There's so many videos where she's drunk. It is crazy and I'm actually scared for this child. So please speak up, okay? Don't watch her content. Report videos that you think feel the, the baby's in danger, okay? Because this is getting crazy. Everybody take a deep breath.
I hope that your spring is going really well. Thank you guys for being here for the show. Again, thanks, Hannah, for this. And everybody in the comments below, shout out to Hannah for being brave enough to come on because she actually is scared of this, of Wheelchair Rapunzel and of Noah. She's scared. And she shouldn't have to be scared. She didn't sign anything. And I want you guys to keep a close eye on what Alex does now. And if she doxes Hannah, there's some legal ramifications that are going to be put in place for Hannah. So I would just, again, we want to protect Hannah, but Hannah also wanted to tell her truth and she, she had to balance that. And so I really appreciate her and I'm sure you guys do as well. So ask any questions you want below or on my Instagram or on the community page for the Q&A coming up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing. You are valuable. You are incredible. Don't forget it. Someone has a crush on you and I will see you when I see you.